What's up guys, GG Forex here. Welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to give you an update on what's been going on, especially with today's um, interest rates for the pound. So that came out at 12. I'll show you what I shared to the group before that happened and then show you what happened afterwards. Plus, I want to talk about stop losses. Do you move them? I've done some testing. The results are in. I've done about 30 trades worth of testing. So yeah, I'm trying some new things out, seeing the results and obviously... If I get some good feedback from it or feel like it can help someone, then I'll share that with you, which is what today's video is about. So stop losses. Should you move them? Let's just jump into the charts and explain everything. OK, guys, so <clears throat> this is the test that I have done. Hopefully the sound quality of this video is better as well, because obviously I've got a new Gucci headset. Anyway, so I've done a lot of trades. I was only going for a one to two because I wanted to test out lower time frames. I'm not really a lower time frame guy. And then I'll show you how I trail stops on a higher time frames, right? So for lower time frame people, by lower time frame, I mean like 15 minute and lower, okay? I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't say that the one hour is um, a lower time frame. I say it's quite medium, quite intraday. Um, and a really nice time frame actually to trade on. So if you guys are new, one hour time frame is a great place to go from for your entries. But anyway, these are only just one to two trades. I wanted to get in and out. I wanted to get as much data as I possibly could out of it. And then the trades I got break even on. I went back and if I remember to do it, but I wrote it down. If if I moved my stop loss, if I didn't move my stop loss, sorry, would the trade have won? Right, and I've moved the stop loss one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Four out of those seven times, the trade would have won without stopping me out of break even, even or a small win. It basically is a break even trade. That's what I'm going to class it as. So four out of seven. So if I'm going for a one to two, right, the trade only saved me three times. So I, I would have lost three percent, right, if I didn't move my stop loss. However. Because I won, I would have won four. Well, two fours are eight, minus the three losses. I still would have been up 5%. Yes, I took an L on three and took the full loss. But I missed out on four full wins, which would have covered the losses and left me with a nice profit. And that was on a 15-minute time frame, just going for one to twos. Um, and it was, it, it was an eye-opener. However, when I moved that test onto the higher time frames, I found that when price moves so far away and you're in a lot of profit, it kind of doesn't make sense to not move your stop loss into profit. It definitely helps in a mindset. So for if you've got a good mindset and you're and you're strong with it, I would definitely say that if you do 15 minute time frames like lower time frame scalping, I don't recommend trailing your stop because nine times out of 10, you're going to get taken out of the move before it does the full move that you want to happen anyway. However, if you're going to do um, higher time frames, so like one hour, four hour daily, I do recommend moving the stops, but in a particular way. Now, the way I do it and how I like to do it is I kind of need a system to stop me from using my emotions to move the stops. Like obviously... If it's my emotion saying, oh, I want price to be here, maybe because it might be a monetary value or whatever. And I get it if you're in a challenge and you need to like get as much profit out of the trade as you possibly can. It does make sense in a small amount of time as well. So you might as well take a small win rather than risking a 1% loss. So that makes sense. So I do get it in challenge situations, but just in trading in general, okay, I find that fractals stop me from overthinking where I'm putting my stop. So for me, I'm in CAD, uh, I mean NZD CAD at the moment. I'm in this buy. My stop loss is below the fractal. Okay, so if price comes back and stops me out, then I don't mind. It stopped me out within profit. But I didn't like put it below this low and then risk taking me out. I le With the fractals, I find you give uh, the price time to breathe, time to show what it actually wants to do. You don't get wicked out. You don't get taken out of trade just through your emotions. You're using a method. You're moving a system. You're using a strategy to stay in the trade. And if you find that putting it behind the fractal, not right next to or just above the previous high, there's another look going off, just previous high, actually helps you out a lot more. Because if you have a look over here, you can see if you were to trail this sell down, right, above the fractal, you can see price came to it and never went above the high. 
you see above the fractal here, see, you would have put your trailed your stop loss above there, depending on your spread. You might have been stayed in, you might have gone out. Then you would have put it above the fractal here, and then you would have been taken out, okay? So it's not perfect, but it's a system that I use in place to let the price breathe. If I just put it against this low, I would have been taken out by now. And then if I saw that happen, and then price come up to hit my TP, I'll be really frustrated and start kicking myself. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment box below, and let's get back to the other half of this video. Okay guys, so I hope that sort of answered or maybe if you had that question, how should I move my stop losses? Lower time frames, don't move them, doesn't pay. Yes, you lose and you have to take that hit, but overall with my seven trades that I did where I did move my uh, stop loss, I actually lost out on 5%. So it's something to think about and obviously if you're going for a high reward to risk, this could be a lot greater as well. That was just risking one to two trades. But let's get into what I'm seeing now on the charts, what setups we're seeing, what we could potentially see and what I have penned in. So guys, this is the GG Forex group. I put this post in this morning at 11 a.m. And what I was sharing with the group was, this is what I want to see this afternoon on Pound Chef. But I have to wait and see what the market gives us, right? I shared this with the group as what I wanted price action to be, right? And let's see, can I zoom in? It happened at 11 o'clock in the morning. And what I wanted to happen was price liquidate the highs, push down, break the lows, flag back up, mitigate, and then come down. But what we got was exactly that. However, price isn't flagged back up yet. We're still waiting for that to happen because the sell-off was so strong with the pounds exchange rate, or not exchange rates, the interest rates, um, price moved quite a bit and we need to wait and be patient for price to come back to our points of interest, right? So let's just go onto the charts. As you can see, the markup happened, right? It's now three o'clock in the afternoon. The news came out at 12 o'clock this afternoon. So I did that prediction an hour before the news and look what happened. Price came up, took people out who were selling it, pushed price down, took people out who wanted to buy it off the trend line. Price came down and has now made beautiful targets. I want these targets to be in place. I don't want them to be taken out. If they do, then I want them to make more targets. If they take out all the targets and I'm just traders just gone. But what I want price to do now is I really want price to start slowly coming back up. And then if we get the same price action again, that's what I want. That's basically what I want to see. So I'll be looking for lower time frame entries in this. Also, I might be going just for this sort of setup as well, which is a one to three and a half, I think. Let me just double check. A one to three and a half. So it's not too bad, or just a one to three, sorry. It's not too bad. We do have a large pool of liquidity down here. It's not looking good for the pound and this price action shows it perfectly. I'm just glad that my prediction was cor correct and hopefully members of the GG Forex group can now capitalize off that move as well. And the same thing happened with Euro Aussie. Where is it? Here it is. I won't give you guys all my setups, but you have a look. Create equal lows, liquidated, got the imbalance, pushed up, broke structure, made targets, and I'm wanting this to flag back controllably also. So guys, that is my breakdown for what I was seeing on these two pairs. So hopefully you learned a lot from that. Okay guys, so that is my breakdown. That is on Pound Chef and Euro Aussie. Hopefully you guys learned from that what I'm looking to do. And obviously if I get triggered into those trades, that's how I'll be trailing my stop. They are higher time frames, So I'll be using my fractal highs to controllably put my stops lower, capturing profit if price goes in my direction, obviously. And that way I'm emotionally out of the trade. If it comes back and stops me out, doesn't matter. That's my system. Systems are important. If you learn from this, if you want to join the GG Forex group and get those sort of setups to look out for, to be prepared for, then join the GG Forex group. The link is down below. I'll see you there. Goodbye.